Hello and welcome to another one of my videos to benefit Eve University. And this is one of my class recordings that I make. Uh, I get frequent requests to have recordings of classes that I teach at Eve University, but I don't feel like putting people on the spot. Uh, I don't want people to feel uncomfortable asking any questions, even if they are very basic or uh, seemingly obvious. Um, I want people to feel comfortable asking those questions. So uh, these videos are to get around that by recording them separate from the actual classes with uh, people in them who are attending live. I'm Amoni Panala. You may know me as Zipporah Panala or Camille Panala, depending on when you met me at Eve University, if you know me from Eve University. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about introduction to scouting. So um, we're going to talk about what is scouting and what is hunting. Now I'm going to use these two terms interchangeably because a lot of people do. Technically these are different things and sometimes people will use the two different terms specifically because they mean two different things, but you'll also just hear them used interchangeably. So I'm going to talk about what the difference is between the two, and then you're going to hear me uh, use them interchangeably. I know that's a little confusing, but we'll get through it together. Um, so we're also going to talk about the types of scouts and hunters. We will talk about uh, the ships that you fly typically when you are scouting. Uh, we'll talk about some tools that you can use to increase your effectiveness as a scout, and we'll talk about some basics. Uh, to be clear here, when I talk about the basics, I'm not going to teach you how to use DSCAN or how to combat pro. If you are interested in learning how to do those things, I strongly recommend that you take the Intro to DSCAN class or the Intro to Exploration class because that's essentially what you need in order to, to do those things. I'm going to be talking about the basics of how you use DSCAN in scouting and how you use combat probes in scouting. So let's continue. So what is scouting and what is hunting? So scouting is going to be when you are being the intel gatherer, right? Um, scouts are the eyes. They're the, um, they're the one that goes ahead of the fleet. So oftentimes you'll be one jump, maybe even two jumps ahead of the fleet. Um, sometimes you might be burn all the way to a destination to check the route, the whole the whole route in advance of a fleet um, and secure the destination, right? Make sure that your destination is uh, is blue. And all that time, basically what you're going to do is you're going to jump in, you'll um, you'll look at DSCAN, you'll tell You'll tell the FC, you know, um, nothing on D-scan. Then you look at local, you say there's two neutrals in in local. Um, you'll look at uh, you'll look at your grid. Are there any bubbles, anything like that? You know, just relay all that information to the FC and then you continue on. Now, sometimes Scouts will be going off, off the the direct route. You might be checking pockets. You might be, um, you might be trying to find out. Say you saw a Proteus on D scan, but then it disappeared, probably because it cloaked up. And now you're kind of warping around the system to see if you can find it where it went. Um, and it's also worth saying that scouts die quite often because they're the first ones um, in an engagement oftentimes, or they are providing warp ins for the fleet. And if you aren't able to get off, you will likely die 
um, your service is appreciated. So now hunting, on the other hand, uh, we talk about hunting, we're talking about a, a very different kind of scouting, um, and that is where you are fit up specifically to engage targets. Um, you want to grab a target, you want to hold that target in place until the fleet can catch up. Um, hunters are still providing intel back to the fleet, but it is with the intention of, hey, I found this uh, I found this ratting Ishtar. Do we want to go for it or do we just want to move on to bigger targets? Um, hunters will almost always go off into side pockets looking for content um, unless the fleet is in a rush to get to a specific place because you know there's content at your destination. Um, hunters may be cloaky T3Cs, it could be all kinds of things. We'll talk more about the ships in a little bit here, but that is the primary difference. The hunter is going to engage, grab, and hold till the fleet arrives. Scouts are almost in, almost entirely about providing intel uh, in advance of the fleet. So these are the ships that are most common for uh, flying in as a scout or as a uh, hunter. At the very basic level, eyes can be anything, um, but one of the popular options is to use a Kovops. So that's your buzzard, your anathema, your cheetah, or your helios, which can warp around cloaked and be basically invisible. Um, this is the person who's just gonna remain hidden and keep tabs on everything in a system or maybe a long route. You're just trying to pass along intel to the fleet. That's it. Um, you might have combat probes um, so you can get a warp in on something but generally you're not going to be engaging a target um, you might you might warp to a target at range and then tell the fleet hey warp warp to me at 50 and you'll land right on top of them something like that um, but you're generally not going to engage a target if you engage at if the fleet engages at all that might not be the kind of fleet you are you might just be trying to get through a, a spicy part of space safely. The next step up would be tackle. Um, and this is going to be things like uh, interceptors, right? So I've got the malediction here as my example, but it can also be interdictors or dictors. Um, so I've got the saber here. Um, these are going to be... Uh, these are your fast tackle, right? So these these ships move really fast. And for the interceptors, it is a good idea to have a point on them. In fact, it is generally considered... Um, f the whole part of fast tackle is that you have a point so you can stop them from warping off. Ideally, you also have a scram so that once you get within within range of your scram, you can shut off their micro warp drive um, because like otherwise they might just burn out of range of your point. Um, the dictors can get away with not having a point because they're just going to pop a bubble and then hit the scram, uh, hit the scram to shut off the MWD. But, you know, um, kind of a preference as to how you fit them. Um, it is. It might also be a good idea to have hyper spatials in the rigs, um, specifically so that you can warp around faster and you're not wasting so much time warping all the time. But you know, it there is some preference involved in here, which is why I'm not going to provide you with a specific fit. I don't want you to think that that is the only right fit, um, but definitely have a point on 
your interceptors if you're going to be tackle um, and dictors. Um, dictors should have a scram so they can shut off those microwave drives. Now, at the higher end level, it's going to be the blops, hunters, that's your your uh, T3Cs and your force recons. And I gotta say this because you will hear people just say recon, and there's two kinds of recons. There's the combat recon and the force recon. The force recon is the one that you want. It gets the bonuses for covert sinos. It gets um, it gets a Kovops cloak. And if you ever need to be bridged by a Blops battleship, you need to be Kovops capable because otherwise the Blops battleship cannot bridge you. Blobs battleships can only bridge ships that are co-ops capable. So, um, and these are the ships that are going to light a covert sino. The covert sino is a type of of sino, which is like a beacon that allows uh, special kinds of ships, like the Blobs battleship, to. Um, Essentially, it's like locking onto it from a distance and then sending the fleet through a um, through a, a warp tunnel or like a more like a Stargate tunnel um, and landing on a target. Um, the covert Sino does not show up on on D scan or anything like that. It will show up if you're on grid with it. So you can see a covert Sino if you're on grid with it, but it's not going to show up on D scan, which is what makes it covert. Uh, because unless you're on grid with it, you're not even going to know that it's there. And uh, then the fleet lands and ta da! Surprise! Blop fleet. So. Um, as a scout or a hunter, um, you should be using at least Dotland. Now, there's another tool called SMT. I have not gotten SMT to work, and that's not a function of SMT being bad software. That's me being a, an absolute scrub when it comes to um, downloading software that is not packaged for um even the most um, basic users of PCs and whatnot. So that's on me, not a function of how good SMT is. But Dotland here is a mapping tool. Um, it is browser based, right? And essentially what it does is it shows you uh, maps of the systems. Now at first it looks like a lot, I know, um, a lot of things in EVE, a lot of tools in EVE have a metric ton of information on them, and it can be a little overwhelming when you first see them. Uh, but the more time that you spend playing around with it and uh, resisting the urge to just kind of nope out just because it's uh, complicated, um, the easier it gets to look at these kinds of things. So this is a map, and this is Syndicate, where... Um, Eve University, we stage our NullSec community out of Syndicate. Um, and here's our little pocket. Um, I know I've been using that term pocket. If you're not familiar with that term, it just refers to systems that only have one way in or out. So here is PC9, where the NullSec community stages out of. This is a pocket here because PC9 is the only way in or out of all these other systems. So it's kind of like a choke point, which makes it generally safer um, to do certain activities in pockets like crabbing um, or running abyssals, or anything, you know, anything that might be like a gank target. Pockets are generally safer to do in uh, because of that choke point. Um, so now 
The cool thing about Dotland, and as you can see in the example on my presentation here, is that you can also gather a bunch of information about these systems. So I strongly recommend that you check out Dotland yourself and play around with it, check, play with the settings. Um, but in my example here, I have the MPC kill delta, which is going to tell me over the last 24 hours, where has the most ratting been? And the green here, the dark green is uh, a, a high increase in ratting. The red is a high, dark red is high in uh, decrease in ratting. So if I were to go hunting, I would be looking for these green, these dark green systems. Because these are going to be the systems that are going to tell me um, there's a possibility of content. Now, I said that there is a, it's, it's over 24 hours, which means that there is a possibility that you get to that system and there's nothing there. Um, CCP does not give you up to date information. It doesn't give you access to the most current information because that would be absolutely broken. Um, nobody would be able to do anything in this game if it was that easy. So I will also say, and I'm not going to show it on here because it is a little more advanced. And this is just an intro. You can use Dotland to calculate um, jump ranges for a Blobs battleship. If you're um, on a fleet and you're doing scouting or hunting, it is a good idea to um, it is a good idea to communicate with your FC and with your Blobs battleship pilot, understanding the ranges on your Blobs. Um, so, for example, like a Redeemer is going to have eight light years with a with JDC five or drunk drive calibration five. Um, but we're not going to get into all that because that's one step above the introduction level. Um, maybe some other time I'll, I'll talk about like how to do a, a blobs fleet, like intro to blobs or something like that. And then we can talk about light year ranges and stuff like that. Now, as a scout or a hunter for that matter, it is super important that you understand how to use your D-Scan and that you're using it constantly. Um, because when you jump into a system, there might not be anything on the gate, but your D-Scan might tell you a different story. There might be ships somewhere within that 14.3 AU range of your D-Scan, which could tell you that there is, uh, there is a hostile fleet it could tell you that there are some cloakies that are that you managed to catch on D scan before they could cloak up. Um, it could tell you all kinds of things. It could tell you that there's content to be found, an orca, an Ishtar, a Roracle, like the sky's the limit here. But if you're not using D scan, you're not gonna find any of this stuff. Um, and if you are going to hunt, you are going to want to practice reducing the range. So in D scan, in the intro to D scan class, I talk about how you can adjust the range of your D scan. You can adjust it from being a 360 angle on the D scan to uh, 180, 90, 30, and so on down the line. Uh, you can also uh, take it down from 4.3 AU to smaller ranges. And doing that um, allows you to narrow down where that content is. So you'll start with 180 uh, or you'll start with 360 to see everything around you. And if you find something, then you want to narrow it down to 180 or 90, then 30 and get it down to the point where you now have uh, a pretty darn good idea of where something is and then you relay that information to the FC and FC will tell you, yeah, go for it, whatever. 
Um, and then there's combat probes. Now, combat probes show up on D-Scan, and if they get close enough, they will also show up on your overview. So combat probes allow you to lock onto a target and get a warp in. Um, and if you are going to use combat probes, it is important to realize that you're basically broadcasting the fact that you are uh, hunting. And so you want to avoid using combat probes unless you absolutely have to. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be ready to use them if they are necessary. Um, it is a good idea if you're going to have combat probes out that you deploy them as quickly as possible and then drag the probes way, way, way off grid, like way off the, um, when you look at the, at the uh, system map that comes up, that little green map, make sure you drag the probes all the way off the solar system and then hit analyze so that your probes go way out there um, and are not on d-scan they're not on grid with anything uh, and that will allow you to have your probes out and ready to scan something rather than having to drop probes which means um, that they will just sit there while you're scan while you're doing your uh you know you're positioning the probes to get it in the place where you want to scan something and then hitting descan and or hitting analyze and watching your probes go out into the system um, it's just one of those little things um, it doesn't totally eliminate the possibility that somebody's going to see that you deployed combat probes uh, but if you do it quickly if you get those probes way off off the solar system um, it can help reduce the likelihood that somebody is aware that you're going to be combat probing. So now I don't have a live class. So if you have questions, please leave them as a comment to this video. I will get to as many questions as I can. Can't promise to do all of them. I also just want to say thank you, uh, to everyone who has, um, who has left wonderful comments or given insights to their own experiences. Um, I really appreciate all that stuff. So thank you very much for those. And uh, I wish you all the very best. Um, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all the content that I put out. Um, I try to record fleet fights. Um, I record all kinds of silliness uh, videos. I do analysis on, on updates that, that come out for the game. Um, and be sure to share this with friends who are curious what scouting and hunting look like. Um, and until then, fly safe.